Hello Internet, it's the news again with Hajra Asaf Khan, a show where the news is always terrible. France isn't happy with the welcome Russia is getting in Africa after centuries of welcoming itself to the continent's resources. And Zelensky finds himself in murky waters as a new conflict is in vogue. France is feeling hurt and betrayed by its former African colonies who are turning their backs on their generous and enlightened former master and embracing Russia instead. The former colonial power is struggling to understand why its African partners are not grateful for its civilizing mission and its sacrifices for their development and security. In its diplomatic dealings, France continues to warn African nations against welcoming Russia after centuries of the French welcoming themselves to Africa's resources. This is underlined by France's fourth largest gold reserves in the world despite having zero gold mines of its own, while Mali's 860 gold mines have not translated into any gold reserves for the country itself. Curiouser and curiouser. Zelensky has it bad right now. Analysts see his relevance to Europe's hopes for the war with Russia dwindling. Since Zelensky is adamant against negotiating with Russia and Russia isn't interested in entertaining his demands for the end of hostilities, things seem to be in a bit of a flux. European leaders are fatigued by the war and its repercussions for them. But according to a Wall Street Journal report, the US has been pushing Ukraine against negotiations. That's rough for Zelensky, because with Europe, Tired of the war and 94% of the US's military aid package exhausted and a new deal facing serious backlash from Congress, he is stuck fighting a war he could never sustain without his support. Of course, with the new war in the Middle East, interests and attentions have been split for Ukraine's strategic partner. I can't help but see Zelensky as the middle child in a budding sibling rivalry. And we all know how it goes for middle children in these situations. The same Congress, though, okayed sending a number of its Patriot batteries to Israel right after the conflict began. Yes, the same Israel that already boasts of one of the most sophisticated air defense systems, the Iron Dome. In fact, it is so effective that the company that developed it has just landed an over 300 million euro deal for its first ever sale. I mean, you have to admit, it's tough. But that's geopolitics for you. Because most of the leadership calling the shots on either of these wars are more educated on the operational theater of war than the context, causes, and genuine solutions for peace. Take Macron, for example. In a move that has been regarded as wildly out of character, he broke ranks with the general consensus of Israel's Western allies and actually used the word ceasefire in a recent interview with the BBC. He also said that the killing of babies and ladies was unjustifiable, which Israel didn't take well to. But in a minute, called up the Israeli president to apologize and basically say, I didn't really mean it like that. But coming back to Zelensky, the man has done it for himself. Though he still has the support and aid of European giants like Germany, sustaining the war without the US's financial support is going to be really hard. Remember when Zelensky was begging Germany for tanks and troops wouldn't budge? The only reason those tanks got to Ukraine was because the US agreed to send their own tanks with them. And at the present moment, the man isn't even asking for aid anymore, but loans. Loans to see the war through as Ukraine braces for a winter offensive. So how well the remaining support in Europe will last Zelensky is anybody's guess. And anybody can tell you it won't be long. That's it for now. Tune in next week to see what's making the news again.